guys the bench buddies are back week 20 of the mlb power rankings we have a new team entering the top five a few around the bottom 10 mixing it up and then all the rest moving spots as well uh, but let's get into it here with the nationals at 30 uh, but before we do that, make sure that subscribe button down below. Get us to 200. We'll be doing an autographed item giveaway uh, to be entered under that. All you have to do is subscribe. Uh, but these nationals here, they, you know, they've been at the bottom this whole year. Um, highest ranking was 26th, and that was because of the preseason. Um, on a positive note, though, Josh Hader gifts them two wins pretty much last week. Um, he has been absolutely blowing it these last two weeks uh, against you know, just since he got traded, he hasn't been the same guy. Uh, CJ Abrams, you know, it's going to be his show here in, uh, in the national uniform here uh, for the time to time to tell. And it's only going to see how he can play the rest of this year and kind of see what we are going to be getting from him. Um, they're pretty bad hitting the ball for home runs wise as well. It's Cleveland and Detroit, the only team's worse. And they have five games this week. 29th, we have the Oakland A's. We have them, you know, kind of struggling here now. Uh, Elvis Andrews got released. Um, you know, Shea Laganers ended an 81 game triples drought in a win over Mariners, which is kind of weird. An 81 game, half a season. Um, but they have seven games this week all at home. Um, you got the Yankees coming in who are going to need some much needed wins. And it's looking like it might happen here against those A's. 28th, we have my Tigers. It's been disappointment this whole year, a lot of injuries. Um, you know, disappointments and, you know, Baez obviously struggling, pitching, MIA, um, you know, and their last name will be with home runs with 72. So you more losses than home runs, and then that's not a good thing. Um, Eduardo Rodriguez, though, on a positive note, came back from his, you know, rib injury and then personal issues off the field um, and threw five shutout innings against the Angels and led them to a win. Uh, and this week they got five games against the Giants and Rangers. 27th, we have the Pirates. They're 2-8 and eight in their last 10. Uh, they're struggling here a little bit. This team, you know, at one point, about a month, two months ago, um, when I was thinking maybe this team could sneak into a postseason. I think they were, you know, sitting around 40 or 30 and 32, you know, so in uh, around June, um, this team really had a shot, and then they really just fell off and kind of, you know, limping to the end of the season here. Um, oh, no, Cruz, though, has been a flashing of a star. You know, when he gets it going with his bat, I mean, he does some dangerous things. He hit the ball very far. And obviously, his cannon is short as well. Um, so expect a big year out of him next year, too. 26, we have the Royals. They're also struggling mightily as well. Uh, the young core, they, you know, are kind of going to be the face of the future here. Salvi is pretty much the only veteran on the team that's left. Um, Cause you know, obviously dealt mayor fuel and all these other guys, but Brady singer, he's been pretty solid since the start of this month, Scott Barlow. He's been good all year out of that pen. But other than that, it's been really bad for them. Uh, and they have three different opponents this week. 25th, we got the Cincinnati reds. Their pitching going to limp to 162 as well. Who knows when Hunter green's going to be back. He did throw a bullpen session on Sunday. So that's positive news. Um, but you know, they're once these September call-ups happen, uh, they're going to throw in a lot of young guys, see what they can get out of them and kind of see maybe, you know, where the roster shakes up heading into next year. Um, but an interesting stat is, you know, this team maybe could be contending for a postseason bid if they didn't have that atrocious start to the season. Um, you know, they're 45 and 49 and let's say, you know, that they could be right around 500 here and, you know, looking for a stretch run. Um, but on a negative note, Joey Votto, the, you know, the guy that everyone loves there in Cincy, uh, is having season ending shoulder, shoulder surgery. Um, so he is going to be returning next year for the Reds. 24th, we have the Marlins, and this is their lowest ranking to date. They've been in, you know, that 17 through 23 range. Uh, but, you know, they've been struggling. Sandy, he's been struggling in a few outings lately, two and eight in their last 10. Uh, but if they look back at this year, um, it could have been a year of what if because Jazz Chisholm's been hurt for at least half of the year. Um, and, you know, counting him and a lot others in that lineup is also holding them back. You know, they've just never had a consistent lineup um, from, you know, one to nine. And, you know, we don't have consistent bats. You don't really get a chemistry going. And that's kind of where the Marlins fall this year. 23rd, we have the Rockies. 
and they kind of fell off as well. They were 13 and 20 since the All-Star break, and they were hoping to come out and really make a push for the postseason. Uh, but that just didn't happen here, and they fell all this way. Um, you know, Jose Iglesias has been a bright spot, hitting, I believe, a career best right now, 312. And CJ Crone, he's having a really good year as well. Um, but pitching wise, Sensella is out for the year with a torn ACL. So he'll be out a while. Um, it's just Rockies, you know, ERA is just going to even skyrocket even more now that he's out. Uh, so expect them to probably be last in the league when it's all said and done. 22nd, we have the Angels. Um, the only good thing they got going for him is Mike Trout coming back after his 30 game absence against the Tigers last week. And Otani, could he win another MVP, even though this team's been pretty dismal? Um, I personally don't think he's going to win it. I mean, unless he, you know, has some remarkable September, but their bottom five team and all hitting, and it, and it shows why, because their pitching has been pretty solid as Reed Detmers and his last five starts uh, has a 2.54 ERA, 28 innings pitched, and 37 K. So he's been doing his job. Otani's been doing his, but after that, um, you know, even Syndergaard, he's been doing well too. But after that, it's just kind of, you don't know what you're getting. They traded away Iglesias, the bullpen's weak, and the back end of the rotation is weak as well. 21st, we have the Cubs surging up a little bit. They're eight and three in their last 11. Um, Kyle Hendricks did announce that he will be done uh, for this year. So he's planning on uh, coming back in 2023. Uh, Ian Happ and Contreras was a good move for not just, I think, them personally, um, for the fan base too, because, you know, these guys really love Chicago and, you know, you could have dealt them and whatnot, but I think Contreras really could come back and re-sign um, just because, you know, he loves it there in Chicago. And you saw how emotional he was before the trade deadline. They kept him and same with Hap, you know, I think if they can bring him um, back or sign him to extension, maybe that could be a good sign too. Um, they got eight games this week and, you know, all against division opponents looking to spoil some, uh, the games there for the Cardinals and Brewers. 20th, we have the Diamondbacks. Uh, they struggled last week, two and five in their last seven, uh, you know, right around this spot for stats. And the pitching has been the bright spot. Obviously, Mario Kelly and Zach Gallon are almost the same exact pitcher this year. Christian Walker, though, has been the only consistent bat in that lineup, and that's what's holding this team back. Um, you know, they're having guys contribute, like Alec Thomas. He's doing pretty good now. Um, but Cattell Marte, he is just nowhere to be heard of this year after putting up a decent I believe it was June he fell off and is back to his old ways uh, from the beginning of this year um, you know they got a lot of questions to make about that lineup going into next year 19th we have the Texas Rangers six and three in their last nine and other than that you know they're finally starting to show what this team could have been through this whole year if they would all have played what we thought they would have played because Simeon and Seager kind of struggled in the first few months. Um, Garcia maybe is a little bit as well. Uh, but Tony Beasley is doing a good job as the interim manager. And, you know, maybe he found something that clicks with the boys um, and get them on the right track. 18th, we have the Red Sox. Uh, you know, we're right around 500 month here. Good story be back from the aisle as well this week. And, you know, if you get him back, that's just a huge bat, bat added back to that lineup. Just another piece uh, to give him for that push for the postseason. But Tommy Pham has been the guy that they really needed to step in there in the outfield. After let, letting Jackie Bradley Jr. go, uh, Tommy Pham has stopped, stepped in and really been the piece for the outfield. Obviously, you know, the home run power isn't there, but him getting on base a lot and producing in clutch moments is something the Red Sox needed um, while a lot of their guys have been struggling. 17th with the Giants. They had a five-game winning streak, and then last week they turned it into a four-game losing streak. And this team it just can't escape right around 500. You know, they're either exactly at 500, one game above, one game below, and they just, you know, can't have nowhere to go. Uh, but do they have enough to sneak in and find, you know, kind of like a hot stretch here, going a week, two week? and get get you know right back into the thick of things there's six games back to the final seed so it's nothing you know too late um, but they're gonna need to find something quick if they really want to make a run at it 16th we got the white Sox. they're two and a half back from cleveland and al central so there's no need to panic just yet um but if you're yasmani grandal it's tough because he's going to the il with a knee injury and he gave Reese McGuire away to the Red Sox. And I really couldn't tell you right now who's catching for the White Sox. Um, 
But, you know, on a positive note, they did add, add Elvis Andrus for some shortstop help with Tim Anderson. You know, he's either suspended or hurt almost every week. Uh, but this pitching is what's keeping this team afloat. Dylan Cease obviously has been the ace this year. And, you know, they just need to find ways to win. Michael Kopech, you know, he got uh, relieved yesterday in his start on Monday because um, it's I'm putting this video out a little bit. But, you know, these White Sox, it seems like they always just get hurt every year and this team could be so good but they just can't stay healthy 15th we have the twins and they're five and seven in the last 12 but i'm moving them up here above those white Sox because well they're closer to cleveland in the division one and a half back from cleveland and this division is going to come out of last week it's going to be probably your 85 86 win team that gets in more than likely and right now it's probably going to be either you know the twins it's between the Twins, White Sox, and Cleveland, and I just don't know who's going to win because it's just atrocious to watch, and I'm going to be completely honest. Like, it should be a good close race like the Brewers and Cardinals are, but this one's just, I mean, you have no clue, no clue. If you're a betting man, I am have no pick for you. You get a one and three shot to win. Uh, but this Twins club, the biggest question for them is starting pitching, and is, is it going to be enough to get them to the postseason? Personally, I don't think so. Um, it's going to have to come from that that lineup. Correa is going to have to step up here in the last month if he wants to make a push to the postseason. 14th, we have the team I am rooting for to make the playoffs here. They're fourth in the pack, pack AL East, 12 and 7 in the last 19. And these Orioles just won't go down without a fight. They're two and a half back for that final seed in the AL wildcard against for Seattle. Um, and it's hard not to root for this team. You know, they were very bad last year, like very bad. And here they are. They surpassed their, you know, over under win total here before the month of September. And it was at 62 and a half. And if you took the over, well, you're a rich man right now because it cashed. And they they really have some tough tests this week. Three against the White Sox, three on the road in Houston. Um, and we're going to see what this team's made of this week. The Guardians, as I was talking about later, dropped a few, but, you know, they're still here um, in 13th. They're 11 and four in their last 15, uh, which is kind of surprising why, you know, they're dropped here. But, hey, you know, it's just kind of you're going to go that way sometimes. Um, you know, they're, I just think it's going to be tough for them to really get it going in the postseason as well. If you can't hit a home run to save your life here and they got six games on the road this week. It's two at San Diego and then four at Seattle, which should be some good series. We got those Mariners here at 12, and they're staying put because they just have a lot more talent than those Guardians. Um, Julio Rodriguez, though, is going to be the factor to the Mariners' success if they sneak into that postseason. Um, Luis Castillo, he's been doing pretty good. Um, you know, he can't complain from bringing in a you know, high-end arm at the deadline. He's been, you know, living up to those expectations. Uh, it is one of the healthiest teams in baseball, so they really have no excuse at this point as they have uh, two warm-up games against the Nats for a big series against Cleveland. 11th, we have the Brewers dropping out of the top 10, and that's just in part to them being five games back from the Cardinals now. Uh, it was 1.5 last week, and just like that, they lost three and a half games uh, for to the Cardinals. But Kesson Hira, he's been on a tear in August and only 24 bats. But this team's going to struggle if they make the postseason uh, just because of low batting average. And, you know, they do have a good on-base percentage. But if you just can't put the ball in play and when you're playing all these really good teams, it's just going to be a lot tougher. And I just think that's something that stands out to me. Um, that's their one flaw is they can't get hits. Um, you know, postseason, you need hits to win. You can't just rely on a walk, sack, fly, all that. We're going to see, you know, what they're made of here early in the week uh, going on the road to L.A. after they played them last week at home. Starting the top 10, we got the Rays making the big jump into the top 10 because they're seven and two in their last nine. And the biggest, you know, news out of Tampa is Wander Franco. He had a um, in his rehab assignment. He had a step back where, you know, he could be injured severely for a significant amount of time and we don't really know too much on it but we're going to see if he's going to even be able to suit it up again um, right now it doesn't look like they need him they were playing good Taylor Walls is excellent there short making some nice plays um, if you want to talk about a name Tyler Glass now 
is he going to be back at, as well this year? I don't think they're going to give him a huge role, but if he's back, I mean, that he has a great arm, and it's definitely one they'll need. Ninth, we have the Padres moving up. Tatis, he's getting his shoulder surgery. Um, he apologized today for, you know, the PEDs, all that stuff. Um, Josh Hader, he got removed from the closer role as well. So, you know, the Padres are kind of in a little bit of shambles here. And obviously, they're a lot back in the NOS, but they only have a game and a half lead for that last wild card spot against Milwaukee. So this NL race is going to heat up, and it's only going to get better as time goes on. Eighth, we have the Blue Jays staying put. They took three or four from the Yankees in the Bronx. And, of course, there was controversy. You know, Manoa hit Judge, and then Garrett Cole got all mad. Noah called him out for it. Um, so next time these guys play, it'll be an interesting series. Could it be in the postseason as well? Um, tension will be high. But are they going to be able to keep the second spot in this wild card race down the stretch? Because the, Bla the Blue Jays have been, you know, cons consistent at being inconsistent. Uh, you know, one week there's six game winning streak and then the next one they go on a four game losing streak. So it's going to be tough there to decide what this Jays team can do, because, uh, you know, a lot of people like myself uh, were picking them to win the you know World Series at the beginning of the year. And they just really haven't lived up to that hype yet. Seventh, we have the Phillies staying put as well. Uh, they hold the third and final wild card spot and they're a game and a half lead. Uh, Milwaukee as well. They're 16 and 8 in the last 24. And some even better news is they're getting Harper back more than likely on Monday. Um, that's if all the rehab goes well this week. And they have seven, you know, not easy games, but easier games. Um, teams low or teams with not a lot of wins they're playing this week. And, you know, you against teams like this, you need to at least take five, five or seven. You need to get those wins. Yankees dropping out of the top five for the last time in a while. It's been a while since this Yankees team has been outside of the top five. And that's just due to, in part, I'm um, struggling. They're four and 14 in their last 18. Um, you know, at one point they were holding a 15 game lead on Tampa and the AL East. And now it's down to eight. So this team, you know, could be slowly blowing this huge lead. Um, in that AL East, but I just don't see it happening here um, with all this talent on this roster. They got to figure it out, right? I, I hope, but it's not, you know, really the starters fault. I'm going bullpen. They, they just can't get through games. Um, Chapman's been disastrous. Clay Holmes has had a tough month. And, you know, after that, you know, Michael King, when he went out for the year, I mean, this is just bullpen has been blowing up. And, you know, they did beat the Mets last night. So they have 75 wins right now. Uh, but, you know, we'll see how they fare tonight. And then they go on the road to Oakland um, and Montas returns home, but he will not be pitching there. Top five, we have the Cardinals eclipsing the top five. And that should say a five game lead on the Brewers in the NL Central after, you know, just a huge week last week, getting three and a half on them. Uh, they're 18 and four in the last 22 Jordan Montgomery is being an absolute steal at the deadline. I mean, he is, well, I think he's 4-0 with the Cardinals now. Uh, just excellent numbers. ERA, I think, under 1.5 since he got dealt over. And Albert Pujols is a name to watch. Seven home runs in his last 10 games. He's heating up. Uh, 500, or yeah, 593 home runs, I believe it is. Or maybe it's 693. Yeah, 693. Now, whatever it is, he's seven away from, yeah, seven away from 700. Um, and I think he might be able to do it if he's going to stay at this pace. Fourth, we have the Atlanta Braves. They're 11 and two in their last 13. And we get, we just got to keep them here for now just because those three teams have them just a tad bit better. Uh, when they get Soraka back, this team is going to be very deadly, depending on what role they put him in. Uh, he is going to contribute well immediately, too, because, you know, this rotation is already good as is. But if they put him in maybe a long relief or middle relief role or even throw him as the fifth starter and then transition him over to the bullpen for the playoffs, that could work as well, too. But this Braves team, I just think we are going to kind of see potentially something like we did last year where this Braves team isn't really talked about as much, goes in the playoffs and just dominates. Third, we have the Houston Astros. Nothing really much to talk about here other than their rough week, which for them is going three and four um, against the White Sox and the Braves. But Jordan, obviously, he's had a great year. And same with JV. 
Um, so I got six games at home this week against some opponents that are looking to make a push towards the postseason. Second, we have the Mets, and they only have a three-game lead on the Braves in the NL East. And, you know, they're catching up, those Braves, but they'll look to put them away a few more series down the road here against them. Uh, and they're 21-7 and seven, their last 28. So this team, they've been playing really well, but the Braves has just been playing a tad bit better and catching up to them in that division. And at one, we have the Los Angeles Dodgers. What more to say about this team is they've been the clear-cut number one for a while now. Um, they're 17-3 and three in their last 20, 17-and-a-half game lead on the Padres in the NL West, the top three team in every stat category. They just signed Max Muncy to another one-year extension. The one negative thing is Walker Bueller. He's more than likely going to be out till 2024. Um, that's kind of where they're putting it at now. He had Tommy John surgery today, successful surgery. Uh, but other than that, you know, that's the only downfall I think that the Dodgers have right now. But that's going to be it for the video today. Make sure you guys hit that comment, like, subscribe, all the buttons down below. Let, let us know how, how these rankings are. But until next time, the Bench Buddies are out.